everyone, welcome back to PJ's CAD class. Today we want to talk about how to build a diamonds uh, in Rhino 5. Uh, I personally use Rhino goals and metrics. Uh, a lot of time I just bring the stone from the library. It's really convenient and never thinking about how actually I need to build it until students start asking me. So. I think it's a good chance now to talk about how to build this diamond in the Rhino. Before we start it, we need to take a look on the diamond structure and actually how um, the diamond cutter is actually cut this stone. So let's go to uh, find some resource first. There are a lot of good resources online. Uh, first I will go is the GIA website. Uh, in their website, um, there's an article talking about the stone and it actually gives you a really brief about what the part of the stone, um, how many uh, faces is that. Um, very importantly, I mean because the stone is cut in differently based on you know the rough and the stone color will decide how big what is the area but it gives you a good idea what is the perfect cut you know what is the dimension the per, uh, percentage of the part so GIA uh, website give you a lot of a uh, good detail and a clear drawing about you know how is a stone supposed to be cut so I'm going to use this image I also look at a lot of uh, tutorial on YouTube on other people's website showing like how the stone is cut how it's hold it it's quite interesting uh, I will suggest you look at those as well but let's take a look how we actually going to build this stone in Rhino. There are specific uh, name for the stone we want to understand first. So let's take a look at the front view. As you can see, I already named it here on the one on the top. This area is called table, and then uh, crown area. This is the crown area over there. Girdle is really important as how it's showing you how big is the stone size. And then you have pavilion and then the culet is the really bottom. This is on the side view. We have this front table to culet. Now let's take a look on the top view. You also have different faces. The one um oh, the one I'm pointing right here, this one is actually the table. Right next to the table, you have this little triangle. It's called star faces. And then next to the star faces, you have a bezel facet. OK, so as you can see, it's all go by the numbers of eight. OK, so this is very really important number eight. So we're going to have everything has a eight uh, ages or faces to go with it. So let's take a look um, how we're actually going to build this one. I'm going to turn everything off and starting from the scratch. Based on the stone profile, I draw uh, this uh, green curve right here. As you can see, it follow where the table all the way to the culet. Um, there's, there's, no, there's a standard for this one. Um, and then if you follow the perfect cut, then, then you will find you know what is the best profile. But in the reality, it really depends on the inclusion of a stone. Maybe you have a more pavilion. Maybe your girdle will be thicker. It's it's really depends on the stone. But where I'm using this profile for building the rhino uh, today. First of all, uh, let's take a look on the front view. I would like to put some single uh, point, snapping to the end point of those points. And that gives me a good reference that when I look at the top view, I know where they are. Okay, And then let's take a look on the top view. I'm going to use the polygon tool uh, to creating a curve. And that way I can snap it into this um, point I just put it in there. Now I'm going to hold a shift key so it will go like exactly this way and I want to have that the end point there is touching very close to uh, the second point uh, that I just placed. So I have this eight faces curve over there 
I'm going to copy this one with the gumball is on, holding the shift so it will scale all the way, um, all three direction, and tap the Alt key at LT. So you see the plus sign on my mouse, and then you release your mouse. And what I wanted to do is have this one close to where half of the second and the third point over there. Now, because what we uh, my goal is trying to creating uh, those little triangle on the top, which is is the star faces. Um, what I need to do is to rotate this guy um, using the gumball to rotate the second curve for 22.5 degree. All right, and next they are on the same level as you can see the front view. So I want to move from the front view going down to the uh, roughly about half of the girdle. Okay, so now if you look at the perspective, I have, well, it's hard to see. Okay, just change the color. So now you can see I have two curves there. Next, what I'm going to do is make sure my all snap endpoint is on. And I'm going to snap in into all those points to create the star faces. In fact, you actually only need to do one section, of, which is one triangle. And then we're going to use the polar array to array 360 degree. I'm doing this is because I want you to see the whole structure. OK, so it might take a bit longer, but you will, it was easier for you to understand. So now we have this uh, star face it. We need to create another one, which is this bezel facet. Uh, if you look at that, uh, this is what we are going to create next, this faces over there. Okay. Now we need another octagon, so I'm going a curve, so I'm going to pick up the one on the table, and again I'm going to scale it again, and to meet my third point and hit Tap, uh, tap on the Alt key. So now I have the third curve. I'm going to go to the front view and move it close to where that point is. Now if we look at this, I'm going to hide the second octagon. Now in the perspective, you're going to see something like this. And again, what we need to do is kind of link everything to together. So I'm going to go to endpoint and make sure I hit the octagon endpoint and then just keep going. And again, I'm showing you the structure. That's why I'm creating the whole things, but you don't have to do the whole things. You just need to do one eight of them. All right. OK, now, if we look at the top view, we have this octagon things, but our stone supposed to be round. So if you look at the stone originally, you're going to notice that on the very last one, those faces are marking in red color here. This one, it's called upper half faces. As you can see, there's a two upper half faces. And it's actually there are eight faces here. OK, so if our octagon, which has eight faces, on the single one here, it should have eight faces. That means I'm going to create a new polygon and let's go back to the top view. Let's create a new polygon. I'm going to go to there and number of a size, typing 64. Want to snap into the endpoint. And then we want to snap into the, the endpoint of that third 
octagon we created but make sure you look at the old view um, you may you may if you just click like that if you look at my front view it might be um, uh, tilted so why we want to turn on our smart track and then we want to move it up um, move it up our mouse so if you go to the top view it's snapping into the end and then you go into the front view and then you kind of see this white uh, line showing up um, then you want to move it on the top view again and click so now this point the curve or the end point will align with that point on the girdle Okay, um, but this one's actually need to go down here, point like that. So now it look more rounded. We no longer need this, um, the third one, the third octagon. So we have the basic stone. Uh, look like I didn't. I'm gonna move this back a little bit to end point to end point. Okay, now. I'm going to create the faces on those and I'm going to use the uh, polyline and snap into to the endpoint to the endpoint and snapping this endpoint to the endpoint. So you notice that I have, if you zoom in, you kind of see the straight line there. So I'm just gonna be patient and, oops, be patient and uh, click all of them and again you don't have to do the whole thing you just need to do one section and then we're gonna use the uh, polar array I'm sorry okay now let's look at all of this I'm going to explore explode all the curve so they no longer like stick together all right let's start creating the faces for the triangle, I'm going to do is using the command for the surface, you have a surface from 2, 3, 4 edges curve. So I'm going to click on the edge. So I'll create that face it. And then I'm going to click on the edge here. Curve, curve, curve. So I have another face it. And those triangle, we just need to be patient. I click one by one and um, I'm gonna fast forward for you all right it's done okay so now we have this one section here we just need to have it repeated oh I forgot one little one okay so let me go back click click and click all right, so we have that one section. To select all of them at once, I'm gonna go into Selection Tool and I'm gonna pick up this uh, Select Single Surface. So while they are select, let's go back to the top view. And we wanna do Polar Array, so let's go to the uh, Array Tool. Oops, Array Tool, and then you got this Polar Array here. The center, I will just type it zero, and the number is eight, which is showing right here. So you type it eight, and then you want to make sure you got 360 degree. Okay. So now we have all these faces there. So how we are going to do the top right here? Uh, it's quite easy. You have the command is called uh, surface from planar curve. So you're going to do the curve. And uh, I should have done this before, array everything, but things happen. All right, so I'm going to click on all the curve and hit enter. Now we have the top portion is done. And uh, I'm going to finish the rest of it in my second video. Notice that it might be a little bit flay out. Um, I will adjust that as well and show you on the second video. 
So thank you for watching. I'll see you on my other video.